Good morning to the citizens of the city of Chicago, to the appointed board members, and to the staff, the bureaucrats, the games that people play, public education, on the plantation, they had an overseer. Mm -hmm. But the steel ran the plantation. These schools, we see black faces, but we know who's over and making the decisions. Racism is still alive in the city of Chicago. Once we realize who we are and where we are, and we own this plantation, we will not be hoodwinked by people of color that look like us when we know who's making the decision in Chicago public schools, the closing of the schools, the miseducation of black children, selective schools, monies that's being spent unwisely, the games that people play. Know who you are and where you are. And because you got blacks on the board, who's actually controlling this board? This is a plantation system when they miseducate, mismotivate black children. Education is very important, and I'm just waiting for those two security. Drag him away, <laughs> shut him down. I'm leaving very quickly. You must be reasonable, you must be rational, and you must be responsible. And you're not doing this by dismantling schools in the black areas. Mr. Blake. You got money. Mr. Blakemore have exceeded his minutes. He's been heard, and the ancestors and good citizens will appreciate his presentation. And may God bless each one of you, and in return, may you bless somebody else. I know who I am, and I'm on the plantation, and I know who's the overseer, and I know who's the master. May God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Blakemore. <laughs> Mr. President, if I may ask, um, we have uh, speaker number 18, who is now in the audience, Queen's sister, and she's asking to address the board, please. Um, number 18, please, Queen's sister. She will be followed by speaker number 32, please, Doris Lewis Brooks, and then the two designated speakers from Lincoln Park Elementary School, um, speaker number 45, Carolyn Vickray, followed by speaker 57, please, Shannon Waterfield. Yes, Lord. But I can. According to the Open Meetings Act, I can. Everybody want to play the game. Brother, I suggest you take time and learn the rules. Now back up off me, because I'm within my rights. Now, as Elder George say, many, I sit down real ass, we don't talk about Julian. We don't talk about Julian. Yeah, look, the room is full of deceivers. <laughs> and great pretenders. <laughs> and I want you to pay attention that Dirty Birdie isn't here either, cause she knew she was gonna get her feathers plucked uh, this meeting. But the bottom line is, many folks wanna know how it is that you serve two masters when I know that you work for the devil. <laughs> and Carney, now, uh, uh, Mr. Moneybags, how to do the David Vitale, whatever your name is. I find it strange that neither you or Dirty Birdie sits on uh, the Criminal Justice Information Authority as the educational authority figure in this city when it's clear that whether the criminal is on the victim end or the offensive end, the majority of the criminals in this city are products of Chicago Public Schools. But it's clear that you all have not failed the schools, the parents have. And it's the parents that I'm here to talk to today to tell you how important it is that you come down here in this snake pit and chop the heads of these snakes that are making decisions.
that are impacting and affecting the lives of your children and contributing to this flood of black blood flowing through the industry streets of Chicago. I also want to bring to your attention that there's no way that the state of Illinois can address the issue of anti-violence without dealing with the multi-millions that you all have wasted <laughs> on the Safe Passage Program. for the legislators to earn your tax dollars and demand this audit. Uh, because we know you're liars and thieves. It's just a matter uh, of it being proven. So he's gonna have to earn the tax dollars money. Now that uh, Sullivan Ferguson, whatever his name is, is gone. Uh, and it's a matter of the parents and the people of the city holding those responsible, the liars and the thieves, accountable for the dollars the millions of dollars that you just can't seem to be accounted for. Thank now, you, Queen Sister. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. On the behalf of Anthony Hudson, your safe passage worker who died during the holiday weekend, you all didn't send them flowers. Thank now, you. Hungry, blood thirsty, demon, demon, could not even Thank you. Our next speaker, please, Doris Lewis. Thank you. Doris Lewis Brooks, please, last call. Moving on to Speaker 45, Carolyn Vickery and Shannon Waterfield, Speaker 57. Ms. Vickery. Hi. Um, I'm here to talk about Lincoln School again. Um, I did want to make a, a note that the, the capital budget um, documents that were presented earlier, um, th they indicated that there was, um, there was a capital budget put out in May for public discussion and Lincoln was not included in that public, um, in that document. So there, there was no public comment on Lincoln and there never has been. And that's been troubling from the whole process, the whole way through. Um, I don't have time to get into the, um, demographic, dispute the demographic justifications that I've heard in this past week. And I do appreciate hearing the, the reasons for the Lincoln, the Lincoln Annex that I've heard in the past week, because I haven't heard a lot of explanation as to why the Lincoln Annex was approved. Um, you know, we've had dem demographers and economists come in and, um, and testify already to no avail. But I am here to tell you how badly this Lincoln Annex is backfiring in the community. Um, if there was divided support before for the annex at Children's Memorial Hospital, that uh, support has really dried up now that it's gone over to the beloved playground. Um, the group of parents who fought for the $50 million annex at Children's um, immediately started to scramble to find playground space at the parking lot across the street, and that's been unsuccessful. Um, reality is starting to hit home with people all over our neighborhood um, and people everywhere are just shaking their heads and they don't understand why this is happening in their neighborhood. Um, many families are pulling out of Lincoln completely and we're just sad to see our small neighborhood school become um, a more impersonal mega school uh, with no playground. Uh, the playground was the heart of the community. It made our school into a community. Um, and now unfortunately it's gonna become a, drop, a pick up and drop off school and it'll never be the same. And this decision was made overnight and it's gonna be gone forever. Thanks, Carolyn. My name is Shannon Waterfield, and I live in Old Town. I'm a little shaken up by this whole scene, by the way, so I'm sorry, because I've never been to one of these meetings. I didn't expect so much passion. And I personally won't show that much passion outwardly, but I'm telling you right now that inwardly, I feel somewhat the same way regarding this annex and how it came through in the dark of night and deceiving so many neighbors in our neighborhood. And the reason why I'm here this morning is to ask you to reconsider 
building this annex. The bulldozers are literally in the alley right now, and this is now DEFCON 1, and now we're going to spend $18 million, and all morning, all I've heard is that there's no money except for us. I don't even know how we got that money. I've heard a lot of stories. I don't know what's true and what isn't, because none of this information ever gets disseminated to people who actually live in the neighborhood. So I'm asking you again, and I'm imploring you to think about this once again. We have the bulldozers in the neighborhood. We have another meeting tonight at the school to talk about the details of how this disruption is going to create so much chaos in this neighborhood. And my last point is, that with $18 million, I do not understand how just this small Lincoln could be made into a basic new Trier Elementary School when we have so many other schools in the neighborhood who could be uplifted and so many other kids could prosper. And now we have the destruction of a playground in the midst of another huge construction site at Children's Memorial. So I say this to you with passion. Please, please reconsider this $18 million. And we know how $18 million construction site can turn into 20, 25, or $30 million that we don't, I think we don't have, unless there's some fund that I'm just not aware of. And I think most of us seem to be told that we don't have any money. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Waterfield. Thank you. Our next speaker, please, will be speaker 34, Rhonda McLeod, followed by speaker number 60, Mary Hughes, and then speaker number 36, please, Stephen Guy, followed by speaker number 37, Michael Haywood, and then speaker number 38, please, Anthony Driver. Moving on to the next speaker, please, speaker number 38, Anthony Driver, followed by speaker 42, Diane uh, DeLidian, and then speaker 43, Claudia Cueva, and speaker 56, Timothy Megan. <coughs> Greetings, board members and staff. My name is Anthony Driver, and I'm a current senior at Howard University and graduate of CICS Ralph Ellison Academy and CICS Basel. I'm here today because I feel as though a voice has been lost. That voice being that of over 50,000 charter, charter school children and parents, hidden behind special interest groups, huge propaganda budgets, political bickering, and rhetoric that can rival that of boxing weigh-ins is the voice of thousands of public school students. I am by no means here to advocate that public charter schools are the answer, are the blanket answers to fix our education system, and I will not make the mistake many of my colleagues who claim to speak on behalf of the children of Chicago, but who themselves have never been enrolled in this system. I am simply here to state facts. Those facts being my parents couldn't afford private school after the fourth grade. The facts being they made a choice to send me to a charter school, knowing I could be the first in my family to go to college. The fact being I grew 10, 10 points on the ACT in three years, and the fact being I will be graduating in May from my for, first choice university, having maintained a full scholarship all four years. I will be the only student within a three block radius of my home to graduate next year with a four year degree. This is a rarity living in the back of the yards neighborhood. Competition is what help, helps drive the American economy. When the auto industry competes, the result is a better vehicle for consumers. Ford and GM compete by making better vehicles. They will not lobby Congress to get rid of the other. In my opinion, competition does have its place in the public school system and can make everyone better. However, there does, there does not seem to be collaboration with this competition. How can we ever move forward if we have two entities, one fragmented and one united, viewing each other as the enemy, all the while serving the same exact demographic of kids? Mr. Driver, excuse me, can you please conclude? Yes. Thank you. When people indulge in this kind of behavior, the children are the ones who lose. With this, with this continued narrative, I will urge the board not to forget that the lives that these schools have changed for the better. Lives like mine and my friends in the back of the yards who have benefited from the promise of school choice. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Driver. Our next speaker, please, Speaker 42, Diane DeLidian. Moving on to Speaker 43, Claudia, Claudia Cueva, please. Hello, I'm Diane DeLidian. Thank, Thank you. you. I also have something to leave for the record. I'll leave it right here. My name is Diane DeLeiden, that's spelled D-A-L-E-I-D-E-N, and I represent WANT, West Andersonville Neighborhood Together, Neighbors Together, where Passage is an elementary charter school wants to expand. We are firmly opposed to this expansion. Passages has not been a good neighbor. 
continuous traffic problems, lying about holding community meetings that have never been held. And last year when they tried to add a high school, they didn't come to the community at all. They came to you, the board. But our community banded together, pressured our elected officials, and we blocked that high school. Now they want to add 50 more kids to their elementary school. American Quality Schools is a for-profit corporate management company, and it runs passages. Its CEO, Michael Bacallis, claims they are losing money because they aren't getting funding for 22 students. Why? Because Mr. Bacallis purposefully and knowingly exceeded their enrollment cap of 410 students by 22 students. That's right, their maximum is 410, but they have 432. And now they want 460 students, which will cost us, from the public schools, another $250,000. They broke their contract with you. You shouldn't give them more money. You should be slapping them with a fine for breaking their contract. But there's a bigger question today, and that's whether or not this board will continue to fund private charter schools at the expense of our neighborhood public schools again. Look what's happening just at a few schools in my own ward. We've already lost $2.5 million to our local schools. Amundsen High School's lost a million and a half. Chappelle Elementary, almost 100,000. And Lyden? Trumbull? Mr. Yeah. Lyden, excuse me, can you please conclude? I will. Thank you. Uh, Trumbull, which is my school, was closed right after Passages was opened because it has a high real estate value. My neighbors and I truly care about our schools, our city, and our ward, but we feel ignored. You're not accountable as a board to us, and I think that has to change. We need elected representative school board, and as a candidate for the 40th ward, that's going to be one of my top priorities. Because Thank like you, most Delighted. Chicagoans, I still believe in democracy. Our next speaker, please, speaker number 43, Claudia. Please do not let passages Claudia expand. Claudia Cueva. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Claudia Cueva. Vengo este, de la escuela Roosevelt, soy mamá de un estudiante de, de la misma escuela. Good afternoon, my name is Claudia Cueva and I am a, a mother uh, of a student at Roosevelt High School. Quiero expresar mi preocupación y, y mi pregunta. Ahora mismo esta escuela está en, en probación. I'm here to uh, present my concerns. Uh, today, uh, you know, up to this date, our school is on probation por un recorte que le hicieron de 950 mil dólares a esta escuela. And we're uh, also getting a, a budget cut of nine, uh, almost uh, 900,000 dollars. Y ahora mi preocupación y mi pregunta es, ¿cómo va a ser la, la educación de nuestros hijos ahora con este recorte? And I'm wondering, how is uh, the education for all children, how, how is, it, how, how is, how is our, our children and our students going to be educated with this huge budget cut? El, la vez este, pasada, en, la, en lo que hablamos en la, vez, la semana anterior, eh, me pareció algo increíble que eh, una escuela Lincoln en la mentaria eh, que de, quiere devolver 20, 20 millones de dólares quiere devolverlos y mientras nuestra escuela le están quitando era una cosa que yo me, me sorprendí de eso devolver y a nuestra escuela le están quitando digo no oh, dios mío ¿por qué es eso entonces mientras que so, so uh, last week she was at the budget hearing she also heard as uh, today many parents from Lincoln Elementary that you know are you know coming and, and telling you guys to that they don't want those $20 million for the annex. And then she's, uh, you know, uh, amazed how, you know, par you know, parents that are saying, you know, we don't need this money, put it back to schools that need it, like Roosevelt High School. Ms. Cueva, excuse me, can you please conclude? Ahora está, dice, nos van a 150 mil dólares. Ahora nos ponen al concilio en un estado. Tenemos que escoger entre maestros o libros. Y esa es mi preocupación y mi pregunta. Ahora, ¿qué, ¿qué hacer? Lo que yo pido es que no, que no hagan ese recorte para que nuestros estudiantes sigan su estudio Thank bien. You. 
Thank you, Ms. Cueva. So now with the new, uh, you know, the, the new student-based uh, budgeting, uh, uh, members of the LSC and the principals are put in a position with the limited resources that they're getting, you know, what are we going to do? Are we going to hire a teacher or are we going to buy new books? Uh, so she's requesting that, you know, the uh, neighborhood schools receive adequate funding uh, and, you know, avoid the big budget cuts. Thank you. Our next speaker, please, Timothy Negan. Good morning. Last year, uh, when I spoke before the board, I described the budget, pension, and underutilization crises as manufactured in order to force privatization of our public schools. Uh, the Broad School Closure Guide, the Center for Reinventing Public Education's Student-Based Budgeting Model, and the Portfolio District Model are all tools used to turn our schools over to corporations. Despite the fact that we have two charter operators under investigation. We've seen a $62 million increase to charter schools and a $67 million cut to neighborhood schools, reflecting the priorities of the board on these matters. Our school, Roosevelt High School, has seen in two years over $1.8 million in cuts, despite the fact that we've only seen 99 students uh, decrease over those same two years. We need you guys to please stop playing games uh, every year with the budget and plugging the hole uh, with one-time funds. You know, since 2001, it seems like the budget's been uh, fixed with one-time fixes. Last year, it was a billion-dollar deficit and then was plugged with $700 million in one-time reserve funds. Now I come to find out this year we have more one-time reserve funds. Well, if I got $20,000 in the bank account, in my savings account, I can't claim that I'm broke, can I? It seems to me that if you've got $700 million sitting in one-time reserves, then maybe that should be moved out of the savings account into the checking account. We have now a three-tiered education system of magnets, charters, and public schools. Magnet schools get eight, up to eight positions paid for by the board, so naturally principals are going to take their most experienced teachers and slot them in those positions. So that's an unfair, unequitable funding model. Mr. Charters Megan? get special, yes ma'am, I will. Megan, thank you. Charters get special allowances uh, that public schools don't get in addition to their private funding. And I wanna know how can we spend an additional $60 million on a north side magnet school named after our first black president when we're closing and defunding schools in black and brown neighborhoods and the media is Thank reporting. Thank you, Mr. Megan. I understand, but the media is reporting that. Mr. Uh, Megan. Yes, I understand. Can I finish my sentence, please? The media is reporting that white enrollment is skyrocketing. Our next speaker, white please. Enrollment is going down in magnet schools, and we're building more. It's resegregating. Our next speaker will be Speaker 44, Jahar Olivares, followed by Speaker 49, Dahlia Mena, Speaker 50, Brian um, Jens, and then Speaker 51, Nadalis Burgos, and 52, Zerlina Smith, please. Good afternoon. My name is Jerry Olivares, and I'm a resident of the Belmont Korean community. My time here today is short, so I'll just speak about a little something that I love to talk about, Noble. If all the schools in my community were of the same academic caliber, I would still choose a noble campus. Why so? Because there's so much more than just schools with great academics. The teachers and staff do more than just teach well and raise ACT scores. Knowingly or not, they let their passion and devotion teach lessons that can't be measured on the ACT. Perhaps the greatest of these lessons was taught to me by our college team, a lesson of self-worth. I was rejected from every selective enrollment high school in Chicago so I came to Prisca College Prep quite unaware of everything that was awaiting me. Still, by the time senior year rolled around, I had yet to forget the constant we're sorry's by the, city's, by the city's best. Nevertheless, the college team, obviously oblivious of those rejections, was convinced that I deserved to go to one of the best schools in this country. Dutifully, I applied to the Ivies, really, really scared that every day I would come home to another set of rejection letters. And come they did. Every school from Columbia to Yale sent a letter back that said, we regret to inform you. Undeterred, the college team had one final bold suggestion. What about Harvard? I'll spare, you the, I'll spare you the details, but when I received their letter, beginning with a resounding congratulations, I was ecstatic. Not only for myself, 
but because I could finally believe the confidence that the school and all its incredible people had in me. And that confidence and newfound pride in what I can do followed me to college. I'm only one of 5,000 alumni, <coughs> but with genuine gratitude, I want to thank the board for expanding the number of noble schools, for helping to provide an option for students who know exactly how they want to reach the upper capacity of their limits, but also for students who were like me, who had no idea that we're all made for greatness. Gracias. Thank you, Mr. Alvarez. Our next speaker, please, speaker 49, Dalia Mena. Hi everyone, my name is Dahlia Mena and I'm an incoming senior at Steinman's High School and I am a student organizer with the Chicago Students Organizing and Save Our Schools and Voice of Youth in Chicago Education. I am here today to talk to you about these unacceptable budget cuts that have been happening in our neighborhood schools. Last year my school lost thousands of dollars and this year you, CPS, cut $450,000 from my school. And not only is this affecting my school, but neighborhood schools all over Chicago. Where is this money going if it's not going to our schools? Isn't that what it's there for? In my school, we lack many resources. Last year, I was in a computer class in which half of the computers didn't work, a sociology class in which all the students taking that same class had to share the same book, and I had a counselor who was rarely ever at her office because she had to teach a class. It is unfair that all this money is being taken away when there are schools struggling like mine. We need to stop these budget cuts and invest in our neighborhood schools. You're setting, up our, you're setting our schools up for failure when we, all we need is your support to succeed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mena. Our next speaker, please, is Speaker 50, Brian Jeans. Last call. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Roberta Salas. I'm the chairperson of the Murphy Elementary LSC, proud member of that. Um, we are a fine arts focused elementary school and it's one of our core principles in our CIWP is the fine arts. I know that's very important to the board and to our mayor. However, we're having trouble funding our fine arts. Um, I know that you increase the student based budgeting by $250 per student. However, I want to remind you that we had about $600,000 in cuts on our last school budget that was not made up. So despite the fact that this appears to be the new normal, we don't really accept that because we really don't have enough money to fund our wonderful and vibrant neighborhood school. Um, our role as LSC is to budget for the school, and I believe that your role is to get us that money in the budget. Um, you're all intelligent professionals. There are many of us here in the Chicago public school community that are also intelligent professionals. and we are asking you to find a solution to the budget problem. Don't just throw out vague talking points about pension reform. Um, I, I really would ask you to find more concrete ways to get money to our budget and also make a very sincere effort to shift more money away from wasteful administrative spending and put it back in the classroom. Um, really find multiple ways to fix the problem. In, in my job, I am required to find multiple solutions to problems. If I came in and just gave one solution, they would go, what else you got? Especially something to me I feel as vague as pension reform is gonna be very difficult to get. Um, and also give the community a way to help make that solution a reality. We are here to help and work as a team. However, you don't come to the community and ask us to help you with these solutions. If you find these solutions, we can help advocate for you. We're very good at calling our aldermen and calling our state representatives and calling the federal government and doing a lot of things, but you don't come to us and ask us to help you. We want to help work with you Ms. and Ellis, finding a sol problem Ms. to solve. Ms. Yeah, Ellis, excuse I'm almost me. Done. Thank you. Um, again, our community is filled with very capable people. Public education is a public service. I really reject the notion that public education, and in particular neighborhood schools, are a business. They are not a business. I want my teachers and principals and education leaders to be educators, not businessmen, so please find money to pay for that. Um, we've Thank chosen you, not Ellis. to flee the city. Help us stay here with these schools. Thank, Thank you very you, much Ms. for Ellis. your time. Our next speaker, please, Maria Rodriguez, last call. Good afternoon. I am here in regards to our neighborhood public schools. I know you heard several testimonies in regards to Concepts Charter School, and you heard um, 
as far as the previous board meeting, we know they're under investigation. 30 uh, schools nationwide have been investigated by the FBI. We have a school within the 21st Ward that is trying to open and construction has stopped on 86 in Lafayette. Now they're looking to relocate on 91st and Vincennes within the 21st Ward. Our schools in the 21st Ward are already starving. We have schools in the 21st Ward, um, out of the 15 schools, seven schools have no art, nine schools do not have music, 12 of those schools do not have a librarian, either a library and or a library, and 14 of those schools do not have a computer tech teacher. And for a CPS model to be that we're getting our children career and college ready, as well as the cuts to the CTE programs at Julian High School, where I went and took several programs there, as well as at Simeon High School with their electrical and shop program being cut this year. We know that those programs are gateways to the middle class. We also know that a lot of our children in our African American communities may not want to go to college to become an accountant, but they might want to have a career or a trade, which will provide them with substantial living and be able to sustain in these, um, within our communities. Um, we have had several community rallies in regards to it. Um, Simeon Alumni Association is behind that the program stays at Simeon. Um, we've met with Alderman Brookings. He came and spoke on his behalf on today. I understand that you're saying that the enrollment of the program was low, but I know across the city, we're talking with teachers, Ms. especially CTE teachers, they are not pushing our programs and promoting them, Ms. Reynolds, as well as excuse being me. a parent. Ms. Reynolds, excuse me, can you please conclude? I will conclude, but what I will ask the board, if you can, the members of the board, I submitted a pledge, and I'm asking that will you not support any openings expansions or additional funding to the operators of concept charter schools while concept and its affiliates remain the subject of federal investigation and our neighborhood schools and other cps run schools suffer from major funding that needs to be faced with millions of dollars in budget cuts thank and you and i wanted Reynolds. to know if you all can sign that pledge while concepts is under investigation our next speaker please speaker is 55 last year my school marcus garvey experienced budget cuts we lost five teachers that year, including our librarian and computer lab teacher. We had to use our counselor as a computer lab teacher, and we used a parent volunteer as a librarian. So I ask you today to look into the budget to get us a librarian and a computer lab teacher. We had those when we had those teachers, we learned. For example, we learned how to research and do the Dewey Decimal System in library. And in computer, we're so busy doing test prep that we can't learn how to type or how to use programs that can help us in earlier in the future. And, and we are hungry, not for food, but for knowledge. Why is it that the North Side, they have all their resources they need to be successful, but in the black communities, we can barely, we can barely afford a librarian. So I am asking you to give us all the resources we need to be successful. And when I come back to school in September, I hope to see everyone from last year, but have a librarian and a computer teacher. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. That concludes public participation. Thank you, everyone, for your uh, comments and your input. Uh, at this juncture, I would ask uh, my fellow board members if they have any reaction to what they've heard today or if they have any questions on the uh, items that we are uh, about to vote on after closed session uh, of the management. Any? Seeing none, then uh, Dr. Hines. Okay. I move for the passes of motion number 14-0723 M01 and the commencement of a closed session to consider the subject specified in the motion. Second the motion. Thank you. I'll proceed with the roll call. Dr. Beenan? Yes. 
Dr. Hines? Yes. Vice President Reese? Yes. Board Member Zapp? Yes. Dr. Escoitia? Yes. President Vitale? Yes. Six size, zero nays. Okay, we will proceed to closed session. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the meeting of the uh, Board of Ed Education is uh, reconvened. Uh, Madam Secretary, please proceed with the agenda. Thank you, Mr. President, and I will start with items from closed session, and I will begin with settlements. These items do require a vote. First report, workers' compensation payment for lump sum settlement for Peter Isellen, case number 12 WC33873. The second report is workers' compensation payment for lump sum settlement for Fitzgerald K. Roberts, case number 09WC08275. The third report is workers' compensation payment for lump sum settlement uh, for Felicita Serrano, case number 07WC27216. The fourth report is approved payment of proposed settlement regarding Dominique L. and D. L. And Mr. President, these items do require a vote. May I have a motion, please? So moved. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. I'll proceed with a roll call. Dr. Beenan? Yes. Dr. Hines? Yes. Vice President Reese? Yes. Board Member Zapp? Yes. Dr. Escoitia? Yes. President Vitale? Yes. Six ayes, zero nays. I will continue with other matters, and these items do require a vote, and they are first report. Appoint Assistant General Counsel, Department of Law, Angelica Nizio. Second report, Property Tax Appeal Refund, Authorized Settlement for AT&T Communications, PTAB Appeal regarding their property tax year 2009. And Mr. President, for the record, I would like to note an abstention for Vice President Reese on that matter. The third report is the Property Tax Appeal Refund, Authorized Settlement for Chicago Renaissance O'Hare PTAB Appeal regarding their property tax years 2009 through 2010. And for the record, Mr. President, I would also like to note an abstention for Vice President Reese on that matter. The fourth report is Authorized Settlement of Condemnation Case for Acquisition of Chicago Board of Education Property by the City of Chicago for an Intermodal Transportation Station. And Mr. President, these items do require a vote. Uh, Madam Secretary, if there are no objections from my fellow board members, please uh, apply the last favorable roll call vote with the uh, noted abstentions. Thank you, Mr. President. I will continue with items from the Chief Executive Officer. And I will begin with personnel appointments and the warning resolutions. These items do require a vote, and they are principal contracts, new ALSC. I'll proceed with the warning resolutions, and they are Paul Flattery, principal, Marshall Middle School, Judith Carthen, tenure teacher, Pershing East Magnet School, Kimberly Johnson, social worker, Office of Diverse Learner Support Services, Arlene McMurray, tenure teacher, Earl Elementary School, Esther Ohiku, Tenure Teacher, Haight Elementary School, Diana Peralta, School Psychologist, Office of Diverse Learner Support and Services, and Doretta Wilson Carr, Tenure Teacher, Washington Carver Primary School. Mr. President, these items do require a vote. Madam Secretary, if there are no objections to my fellow board members, please apply the last favorable roll call vote. Thank you. I'll continue with additional items from the board, and these items do require a vote, and they are first report, resolution approving chief executive officer's recommendation to dismiss educational support personnel. The second report is the resolution approving the chief executive officer's recommendation to dismiss probationary, a probationary appointed teacher. And for the record, I would like to note that on July 18, 2014, the board members and the office of the board received the CEO's recommendation to dismiss a probationary appointed teacher pursuant to board rule 4 7 and B2B and 105 ILCS 5 slash 34 84. Her recommendation included the name of the teacher affected and the reason, and she also noted that the teacher affected will be notified of their dismissal after adoption of the resolution. Um, Mr. President, these items do require a vote. Um, if there are no objections from my fellow board members, please apply the last favorable roll call vote. Thank you, Mr. President. And I believe that Dr. Beenan has a motion, please. I move that pursuant to section 2.06D of the Open Meetings Act, board members have reviewed the redacted portions of closed session minutes for the period beginning July 1995 through June 2012. The board previously opened these closed minutes for public inspection with noted redactions in January 2012, January 2013, July 2013, and January 2014. The board finds that the need for confidentiality continues to exist 
for the redacted portions of these minutes, which portions will not be available for public inspection. Uh, may I have a second? Second. I'll proceed with a roll call. Dr. Beenan? Aye. Dr. Hines? Yes. Vice President Reese? Yes. Board Member Zopp? Yes. Dr. Escoitia? Yes. President Vitale? Yes. Six size zero nays, and I believe Dr. Hines has a motion, please. Yes. I move that pursuant to section 2.06D of the Open Meetings Act, the board <coughs> members have reviewed closed session minutes for the period beginning July 2012 through December 2012. The board members have determined that the need for confidentiality does not exist as to those minutes, except as indicated in the redactive actions yeah, portions, I'm sorry. Minutes were redacted, reacted for the following. Privilege, attorney, client, communications, information subject to privacy or confidentiality protections in the state or federal law, and information where the board determines it necessary to protect the public interest or the privacy of individuals. The board finds that the need for confidentiality as to the reacted, uh, redacted materials remain. Upon adoption of this motion, all closed session minutes from July 2012 through December 2012 with notice redactions will be available for public inspection. May I have a second? Second. second. I'll proceed with a roll call. Dr. Beenan? Yes. Dr. Hines? Yes. Vice President Reese? Yes. Board Member Zapp? Yes. Dr. Escoitia? Yes. President Vitale? Yes. Six size zero nays, and I believe <clears throat> Vice President Reese has a motion, please. Yes. I move that the board adopt the minutes of the closed session meeting of June 25th, 2014. Board members have reviewed these minutes along with previously approved minutes of closed sessions from January 2013 through May 2014 in accordance with Section 2.06D of the Open Meetings Act. Following this review, board members have determined that the need for confidentiality continues to exist as to all closed session minutes from January 2013 through June 2014, and therefore these minutes will not be available for public inspection at this time. I have a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, proceed with a roll call. Dr. Beenan? Yes. Dr. Hines? Yes. Vice President Reese? Yes. Board Member Zapp? Yes. Dr. Escoitia? Yes. President Vitale? Yes. Six size zero nays, and I believe that board member Zapp has a motion, please. Section 2.06C of the Open Meetings Act permits the destruction of audio recordings of closed session meetings no less than 18 months after the completion of a meeting if the board has, one, approved the minutes of the closed meeting, and two, approves their destruction. The board closed session meetings from July 2012 until December 2012 occurred more than 18 months ago, and the board secretary maintains board approved confidential minutes of all such closed ses sessions. Therefore, I move that the audio recordings of the board's closed session meetings from July 2012 until December 2012, as itemized on the attached Appendix A, be authorized for destruction in accordance with the Open Meetings Act. May I have a second? Second. Thank you. I'll proceed with a roll call. Dr. Beenan? Yes. Dr. Hines? Yes. Vice President Reese? Yes. Board members up? Yes. Dr. Escoitia? Yes. President Vitale? Yes. Six size zero nays. And I believe that Dr. Escoitia has a motion, please. I move that the record of proceedings of the regular board meeting of June 25th, 2014, prepared by the board secretary, be approved in such record of proceedings, be posted on the Chicago Board of Education website in accordance with section 206 of the Open Meetings Act. Second. Thank you. I'll proceed with a roll call. Dr. Beenan? Yes. Dr. Hines? Yes. Vice President Reese? Yes. Board Member Zapp? Yes. Dr. Escoitia? Yes. President Vitale? Yes. Six size zero nays. Uh, Mr. President, I will now continue with um, items on the public agenda and only read the board report numbers since the titles and board reports appeared on the public agenda. I will begin with resolutions and a policy. These items do require a vote and they are RS1 and RS2, PO1. And for the record, Mr. President, I would like to note that PO1 was revised and the final will be in, in the action. And it was a minor correction on the board meeting date on page one for that matter. And Mr. President, um, these items do require a vote. 
If there are no objections from appellate board members, please apply the last favorable roll call vote. Thank you, Mr. President. I will continue with the communication regarding the location of the board meeting of August 27th, 2014. This is to advise that the regular meeting of the Board of Education scheduled for Wednesday, August 27, 2014, will be held at the Central Administration Building, 125 South Clark Street, Board Chamber, fifth floor. The board meeting will begin at 10.30. Public participation guidelines are available on our website or by calling the uh, board office number, 773-553-1600. For the August 27, 2014 board meeting, advanced registration to speak and observe will be available beginning Monday, August 18th at 8 a.m. and close on Friday, August 22nd at 5 p.m. or until all slots are filled. You can advance register during the registration period by the following methods online, by phone, or in person. And the public participation segment of the meeting will begin as indicated on the meeting agenda and proceed for no more than the 60 registered speakers. Mr. President, the next uh, items uh, on the public agenda do require a vote, and they are EX1, EX2, and for the record, I would like to note abstentions for President Vitale as well as Vice President Reese for EX2. On EX3, uh, I would like to note an abstention for Dr. Ascoitia on EX3. Moving on to EX4, I would like to note abstentions for Vice President Reese on EX4 as well as Dr. Hines. And for the record, I would like to note that we will take a separate vote on the next item, EX5, uh, after uh, EX6. So for EX6, Mr. President, um, for the record, I would like to note abstentions for um, President Vitale on EX6 as well as Vice President Reese on EX6. And Mr. President, these items do require a vote. Uh, Madam Secretary, if there are no objections from my fellow board members, please apply the last favorable roll call vote with the noted abstentions. Thank you, Mr. President. So as I indicated before, we were going to take a separate vote for EX5, and I would like to note that the uh, votes will be uh, two separate votes. The first vote will be to authorize the addition of the Illinois Institute of Technology to the list of approved student teaching universities on Exhibit A-1, and the second vote will be to authorize the addition of the University of Phoenix to Exhibit A-1. Uh, and Mr. President, um, the first vote then will be for the addition of IIT. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Dr. Beenan? Yeah. Dr. Hines? Yes. yes. Vice President Reese? Vice President Reese will note an abstention for you on this no. matter, so you will not vote. Board members up? Yes. Dr. Escoitia? Yes. And President Vitelli, for you as well, will we'll also note yeah. abstaining. So we have four ayes and two abstentions. This item is approved. Um, the second vote, Mr. President, then will be for um, the University of um, Phoenix to be added to the list of um, universities on Exhibit A-1. And Mr. President, this item does require a vote. I may have a motion. So moved. Second. Second, Second, please. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll proceed with the roll call. Dr. Beenan will abstain on this matter. Dr. Hines? Yes. Vice President Reese? <laughs> Thank you. He will abstain. Board Member Zapp? Yes. Dr. Escoitia? Yes. And President Vitale? Yes. We have four ayes and two abstentions. This item is approved as well. Moving on to the next items, um, Mr. President. They would be AR1, 2, and 3. And Mr. President, these items do require a vote. I have a motion. So moved. I'll proceed with a roll call. Dr. Beenan? Yes. Dr. Hines? Yes. Vice President Reese? Yes. Board Member Zapp? Yes. Dr. Escoitia? Yes. And President Vitale? Yes. Six size, zero names. I'll continue with additional items on the public agenda that do require a vote, and they are. PR1, and for the record, I would like to note abstentions for President Vitale as well as Vice President Reese for PR1, and also note that the board report was uh, revised and the final will be in the action. There was a minor correction in the financial section for the unit number. The next item is PR2, and for the record, I would like to note an abstention for Vice President Reese on PR2. Moving on to PR3, 4, and 5. 
The next item is PR6, and for the record, I would like to note abstentions for Vice President Reese as well as Dr. Beenan on PR6. We then have PR7, and on PR8, for the record, I would like to note an abstention for Vice President Reese on PR8. The next item is PR9, and on PR10, for the record, I would like to note an abstention for Vice President Reese on PR10, and also note that that item um, was revised in the financial section as well, and that the final will be in the action, um, and there was a correction on the parent unit and some strikeouts that did not appear on the original report. The next item then is PR11, 12, PR13, 14, on PR15, Mr. President, I would like to note an abstention for Vice President Reese on PR15. We then have PR16, PR17, PR18. On PR19, for the record, I would like to note abstention for Vice President Reese on PR19, as well as PR20, an abstention for Vice President Reese on PR20. And Mr. President, these items do require a vote. Uh, if there are no objections from my fellow board members, please apply the last favorable roll call vote. Thank you, Mr. Abstentions. President. I will continue with additional items that do not require a vote, and they are EX7 and AR4. And Mr. President, these items just need to be accepted by the board. Um, Madam Secretary, please mark received and file. Thank you, Mr. President. And there are no further items on the public agenda. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone.